Village life is typical of India. The peasant and his plough are the very symbols of our nation. This is the story of a South Indian village with all its characteristic beauty and simple charm. At daybreak, the women and children go to bathe in the stream, while the cattle are led out to graze to the tune of their tinkling bells. The women scour the household vessels in the stream and fill them with water for the day's requirements. The first important duty of the day is the worship of the village deity, while some of the villagers bathe in the waters of the temple tank, as it is believed that one is thereby purified from sin. However poor he may be, the South Indian villager is noted for his scrupulous cleanliness. Even the humblest homes are kept in perfect order. Nearly all tasks are performed in company, as community life is especially characteristic of the South. In this street live Brahmins, their house fronts beautifully adorned with columns. As in all villages, news is passed round quickly. In this house, there is much to talk about, as there's going to be a wedding in two months' time. This must surely be the bride. The sadhu predicts a long and happy life, and numerous sons and daughters, and is duly rewarded by the grateful bride. The backyard is a veritable hive of activity. Cattle are fed and watered here, and cows are milked. Women sing village songs as they pound the rice. Down thus to music, instead of gossip, work progresses swiftly. Even the chickens seem to find their share of the task easy. At eight o'clock, school begins. The children of South India are extremely fond of learning, as these happy little faces plainly show. When lessons are over, the children play typical local games. The South Indian village is a self-sufficient unit for smelting iron, making cart wheels, buckets and such things, or for shoeing his bullocks, the villager need not go far the local blacksmith fulfills all these needs. Pottery is an important local handicraft. The potter's skillful hands work swiftly. Vessels of different designs and sizes are fashioned as if by magic. They are dried in the sun and baked in fire. From easily perishable pottery, we turn to the seemingly imperishable monuments for which South India is famous. These wonderful images express all the emotions, for each of which there is a set symbol. The coconut tree is useful in many ways, and both coconuts and leaves serve a number of purposes. The stem is cut in two, and by interweaving the leaves, thatch is made. The children are taught at a very early age to help in this work. Basket making is another industry in which coconut leaves are used, such baskets being very strong and serviceable. Rope is made out of the fiber from the outer cover of the coconut. The work is done either by improvised wheels or by hand. Sometimes ropes are made from palmyra leaves as well. In many of the villages, the main occupation of the people is weaving. They spin the yarn on the chakra, size it, and weave it on the hand loom. Apart from the kadi thus prepared, they also purchase mill yarn and weave it on their looms. Our hand-spun clothing has done much to alleviate the cloth shortage. In 
the dry regions of the South, ground nuts are the staple crop. It is not we alone who like to munch them. They are popular with all, from our venerable ancestors to our youngest descendants. Ground nut oil is being prepared here. This oil is widely used in cooking nowadays. Irrigation by wells is common in the south. The water is drawn from the wells in large buckets and emptied into the streams whence it flows to the thirsty fields. But even by this ingenious method, irrigation is no easy matter in the dry areas and a fertile field is often a standing testimony to the dauntless perseverance and tireless labour of the peasants. As soon as the fields have been watered, ploughing begins and in the course of time, waste land turns into green meadows. Whatever the villagers do, they sing their way through their work forgetting their weariness in the joy of music. Harvesting, naturally, is an occasion for especial enthusiasm. If the land is their own and the harvest a good one, their gladness knows no bounds, and they seem not to be aware of the heavy burdens they carry as they gather in the crops. As the carriers transport the hay to the marketplace, they still sing their melodious folk song. There are numerous dramatic troops that travel from village to village in southern India, and evening performances are given in the streets. Here the people of the village witness one of the most popular musical dramas, Mathura Viran, the story of Princess Bomi being wooed by Viran, a commoner. <laughs> Thank you. 
சடங்கு உண்மை நான் கொண்டு வந்தேன் பாரு எனதழகு பொம்மி அம்மா துணை கொண்டு வந்தேன் பாரு நான் வர மாட்டேன் என்று சொன்னாலே என்ன செய்ய முடியும் எப்படி கொண்டு வர முடியும் போதம் போல நான் வந்து உண்மையை நோக்கி வந்து இருப்பேன் பந்து போல் எடுத்து வந்து இருப்பேன் பூதம் போல நீ வந்திருந்தா நான் குழுவி வடிவமாகி is undoubtedly the harvest festival in the month of January. Bandits and peasants, rich and poor, all flock to take part. First, the images are carried in procession. The village dancer is much in evidence on these occasions, for the South Indians are passionately fond of dancing, which plays a great part in all their lives. The most exciting event at the harvest festival is the Jali Katu, or bull sport. The enraged animal is let loose with the purse tied round its neck. Whoever now takes the bull by the horns is not only the lucky prize winner, but also the hero of the village. This risky sport provides a thrilling climax to our film on village life of South India. Does anybody want the purse? Come and get it.